You know what, I'll six wolves, I'll fight you in a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to Sound Liver. I am live on Twitch right now, and this one you play is as a di direct result of me getting myself banned. But, oddly enough, I, I didn't get banned violating Ian's butt back, or sitting on top of TARDIS, or doing any kind of ill-advised maneuver that involves angling more than one should. In fact, I was banned for trying to help, trying to save an innocent pig. There he was, sitting at the back of the mat, just oinking away. When suddenly he was set upon by a vicious Panzer 1C that came up to him, but I was there, on the hill. I stood on the top, silhouetted against the sun, and I said, Nay! You may not have this pig this day, for this is what I have to say. And I fired, and I would have had my way, but it was not to be that day. Because I hit the arty a load of times and got banned, so that kind of sucks. Anyway, SU12244, hmm? what can I tell you about it? Well, a long time ago, I would have told you... Uh, this tank was overpowered, but these days, when wargaming are introducing new premium tanks like it's going out of style, slowly making the new ones more and more overpowered so that you ha you're forced to upgrade from... You know what? I've done this monologue before. It's going to get really tiresome. Do it every time I think about it. So, I'll just say SU-12244, not as awesome now as it was when this when you play took place, which is in 19.7.01. This tank has 90 millimeters of frontal armor angled back at 45 degrees. That is better than the armor on the uh, ISU-152, which is 90 millimeters but unangled. The ISU, remember, is tier 8. So, looking at some very good armor will allow you to dominate some low tier and equal tier opponents in this tank if you keep it frontal. 7.2. 5 rounds per minute with a 122mm gun on this vehicle that gives it the exact same DPM as the STB-1, which is a tier 10 medium tank. Ironically, being based on the hull armor of the T-44, they basically just took the tongue off and put a structure on it with a, a decently large gun. This thing also has the mobility of a medium tank. Its transverse speed is exceptional. Its top speed, 47. I should know that. Shame on me. Top speed of 47. This is a, an, an incredibly mobile tank carrying around that DPM. The only disadvantage of this tank is the lack of a turnip, making it fall behind things like the Scorpion G in terms of general versatility. That said, Got some armor, so fantastical. All right, 175 millimeters of pen. You might be thinking, okay, so it's got basically the same gun as the IS-6, the WZ-111, the 112. No, this thing does not have financial matchmaking like the IS-6, the WZ-111, the 112. No, this thing will see tier nine tanks. And you might think, okay, I can compensate for that with premium APCR. You only go up to 217, which is less than the base pen of an IS-20. It's... This thing, it dominates. When it gets something that it can pen like this, you're seeing here, look at this more DPM. This is an equal tier heavy tank. And he was just going to tear it to freaking shreds. DPM of this vehicle is exceptional, but it's limited because of that 175mm of pen and the lack of uh, assets in terms of premium penetration as well. So, you can compensate for that with the mobility of this tank. Traverse getting around your enemies, also camelating of this tank is pretty damn good as well. Now, big gun, so the camelating does go down a bit, but it's a premium tank. So the, the, the camera lighting does not go down because it still gets the old buff that, that uh, tank destroyers got after firing their gun. So you can fire in this tank 
and remain unspotted at a fair distance. Speaking of distance, view range of this tank is abysmal. One of the worst factors of this tank, 330 meters of view range. You gotta compensate for that with binos or something, or either that or play this tank very aggressively. Myself, I have binos, cannonet, and a gun lammer on this tank. That, for me, gave me the best possible chance of winning. Now, now that you know your way around the SU-122-44, we, we got to that level just in time for a game to unfold here. Now, Ian is platooned with kill switch engage. He's over there in the comet. And I may interest you to know... That was a cheeky shot, huh? I may interest you to know uh, kill switch has three marks on his comet, so he is certainly capable, and these guys... Right here, you can see the shells flashing into the range over there. Those are from Kill Switch out wide in the Comet. These guys are playing it basically perfectly. The enemy have the low... Well, I say low ground, but... Uh, M6 was on the high ground, but for all intents and purposes, it is low ground. They own this area, which they're going to have to come into this low ground and own it to attack into the base here. That's giving these guys... A prime advantage. Ian's going to perch up on the ridge here and try and get some vision, but he's got an AT-15A. And while that is nowhere near as lethal, lethal as the AT-15, it does have a rapid fire gun that will do around 115 alpha damage per shot. I think it fires very rapidly, as I say. So don't want to leave yourself exposed to that if possible now this is a three versus six i think at the moment luckily they appear to have a, a an is2 unluckily the is2 is um incompetent so i believe he is going to uh, violently decease very shortly that said the at-15 is poking up out in the open i'd be worried about the ikv I just got spotted on the map of the AT-15. Oh, the AT-15A. You're going to realise he is not showing this tank the respect that it deserves. Now, because there's no replay, we don't have the ammo down at the bottom. So we can't tell what ammunition Ian is firing. But we can know what that KV-1S is firing. That is certainly a HE shell that just crashed right into Ian's tank. And this AT-15 could basically win the game if he just turned his tank. On to armor of the AT-15 now. I think it's 220. Either 220 or 228. Either way, you're not going to play it with the uh, SU-122-44. On to armor of that thing, you need to aim. You need to aim for the Capola. And this KV-1S could have won the game if he'd been firing AP from that angle down onto the upper plate, mitigates the angling of this tank. He's not going to get to fire another shot due to the DPM of this vehicle. 7.5 rounds per minute. Ian Hugs cover is all too aware of what's approaching him here. And Kill Switch does have some health left. Not a massive amount of health, but some health nonetheless. He's going for that IKV. Go check out the tank that can potentially have the high ground if possible. And in this situation, in this situation... He's dead. Alright. I'm I'm gonna pause this. I'm gonna pause this because this is critical. Um this is absolutely critical. Um so that you can't see this right now. That was a huge misplay. That that was one of the worst plays in this game. You had a one shot IKV on the high ground. Kill switch was right there. All he had to do was drive up there and kill the IKV. And the IKV's off the high ground. Right now, he's taken the low ground. He's killed this guy. I would go straight back there and kill that IKV. I, I'd like to think I've realised my, my mistake at this point. Perhaps it's the stress that's getting to him. I don't know. But always, 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 if you're not going to get punished for do it, doing it, kill the tank on the high ground first. You'll notice up there, Ian's done 6,000 damage in this game. 6,000 
That is madness. Highest damage I've done in this tank is 5,500. In fairness to me, that was a tier 9 game. So, yay. Alright. So, let's see if he can work with the uh, unfortunate choice of killing this guy down in the low ground here. As I said, the RKV is a one-shot, but he's got high ground. And if he's a good player, he is going to utilize that massively. See, Killswitch has to expose himself now to go up to him because the Hellcat is on the other side. Whereas if he had just gone round up, uh, at the back there, he would have killed that guy, owned the top, and he'd be in a far less difficult situation than he is now. And that would have been really nice to secure the kill there, but uh, I think he's not going to let him have it. And the IS-2 in chat is showing a bit of awareness, saying that he, he did not play well. I'd uh, be forced to agree with you right there. Now, Killswitch has disengaged from another low ground there, which is absolutely the high play, but now he's being encroached on by a full health Hellcat. And the Comet does have good DPM. It's got a 76mm gun, 15.38 rounds per minute with this tank. So if the Hellcat misses, he's going to be able to get two shots in for basically only one that the Hellcat fires. Hellcat's challenge reverse is awful. 16 degrees a second. If you blow his tracks off, or maybe even if you don't, you can go around behind him. And there's the IKV. You know, this this is gonna be special because I can see I can see the reactions in chat. I'm gonna be able to see the heartbreak and the sadness from people in chat. And you know that that loss, it's it's rare that you get a loss that you can put your finger on so perfectly. But what lost that game was Kill Switch's play on the uh M8 or whatever it was in the center. If he had gone up and killed the IKV, I'm confident that these guys could have won this game together. Um, I, I have absolutely no doubt of that. But, uh, I mean, stressful situation at the end of the game. We can't all think perfectly. I know I've made my fair share of mistakes in that situation too, but high ground, gentlemen. If there's one on the high ground and one on the low ground, no, tank the tank, the tank on the high ground. It will win you games like this. And the annoying thing about that, about having knowledge of the game, is you don't see actively how useful, how important that those decisions are. And what I mean is, if Kill Switch had gone to the high ground and killed that IKV, and Ian had stayed here, they'd have won the game, yeah. But in hindsight... The hindsight would be nowhere near as it's strong as it is with me now. Now I'm sitting here saying, oh, you should have done this. This was the play. This was the clinical play. And yet if they won, it would be harder to put my finger on what exactly led them to the win. And, and I think that's a mentality that, that is proficient. Um, I want to say it happens a lot because when you're good at the game, you make these decisions almost subconsciously. It's just instinctual to drive a little bit further to the left when approaching this flank. To take the high ground, to, to do these things. And you don't, after a while, you don't have that choice. You don't have that, oh, what am I going to do here? You just do it. And that is both great, it displays skill, but it's also annoying. Because you kind of miss that decision-making process where you can say, okay, I have to do this. Maybe it's wrong. Maybe it's right. Oh, no, that is right. I missed that. I missed that completely. Either way, gentlemen. A splendid game. Ian, congratulations. 6,000 damage, fun, sir. That's very, very nice indeed. Um, yeah. And you know what? We're not going to look at the post-battle results. Because screw everyone else. I am me. Yeah. Farewell, gents. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>